you for graciously receiving me. God tells us to love knowledge. He tells us to seek wisdom and understanding. A wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases power, according to the Proverbs 24.5. So how is one supposed to gain knowledge? Well, how about a basic, simple skill, the ability to read? Do you know that in this country, 44 million Americans, 16 and older, cannot read that scripture? 400,000 to 1 million high school seniors graduate functionally illiterate every year in this country. When we say functionally illiterate, basically what we're saying is people who read on a first or second grade level. We add 2.2 million Americans to the illiterate rolls each year. Illiteracy costs the United States of America, America's businesses, $225 billion a year in lost productivity. Where I'm from, in Mobile, Alabama, Bell South is one of our companies. Two years ago, they could interview 10 people and expect to get one good candidate. That was two years ago. Today, they interview 200 people and they get possibly six good candidates. The reason that they state, people cannot read. It cost us taxpayers $5 billion in compensation, and it costs millions more in terms of prisons filled with men and women, 80% of whom cannot read above the first and second grade level. Only 25% of our nation's fourth graders read at a level of proficiency. That leaves 75% of others falling through the cracks. They are powerless. The reading problems are worst in large metro areas with high minority population figures. And just three weeks ago, there was a national story released in which they said the reason that we have these horrible low reading scores is due to the blacks who cannot read. I think that's kind of dangerous when we start labeling one group of people like that when it really is a mixture of many. And it has nothing to do with race, it has nothing to do with socioeconomic position. In fact, one evening I was having dinner and I sat next to the chairman of the Mobile Area Education Foundation. He is a high-powered attorney in our city. And he said to me, Eleanor, we got your videotape letter of fun for our six-year-old daughter. She was having reading problems, but she doesn't have any reading problems anymore. So it crosses everything and everyone. I didn't want my children to have a problem with reading was in school and had the pleasure of learning how to read with phonics. It only went up until the third grade. But as a person from a television news background of writing and reading and speaking for a living, certainly I thought I was quite capable in teaching my children how to read and read phonetically. But when my three-year-old daughter came home one day telling me the sounds of L and X, I thought she was wrong, so I met with her teacher only to find out that her teacher said, you have a problem, lady, and you are the one who needs some help. Your daughter is doing just well. So I said, okay, tell me something that I could have. What would be a good product to use to help me help my daughter? And she named some of the things that we already had in our home, and I said, no, I'm looking for something a little bit more direct, um, to the point. The attention span of a child that age is two to five minutes, so I want something short, to the point. I don't need a whole lot of stuff in between. We want to get on with learning. She said, well, I, I haven't seen what you're talking about. I don't really think that exists on the market. I went to the store and bought something anyway, and when I got home and tested it out, I was most disappointed. And my husband said, 
Listen, you can't find what you're looking for. You can't come in here fussing about it. I forbid it. So get on with creating what it is that you're looking for. I went back to the teacher because I didn't want to create what I was looking for. And I said, please tell me there's got to be something else. She said, well, no, and you know, we have another problem, too. We have three-year-olds who don't come back to school. You see, their parents spank them really terribly for not learning fast enough, so they don't come back. Now, I had heard about people spanking children who were not doing well in athletics at an older age, and maybe even at an older age for academics, but not three-year-olds. And that's what really broke me and made me go and talk to the father and say, well, help me. Let me try this. And so I wrote this thing called Letter Fun. And then God blessed it. And it won a national prestigious award. It won the 1998 Parents' Choice Video Recommendation. And we thank God for that. But the letters that came back in, thank you. The letters that came back in were so wonderful. There were teachers and principals and parents saying, this works. And it's not just for infants to first grade. We're using it on third graders and 17-year-olds in our ninth grade classes reading on a second grade level. And we've had high school students to come to our home and to thank us. It's really been a blessing. And it certainly has become a ministry. So you say, well, what is in this letter fun? Well, what we did, we took two eight-year-old teachers with their three and four-year-old students, and we allowed them to help everybody learn the alphabet phonetically, consonants phonetically, long and short vowels phonetically. And I noticed that, you know, we have Smokey the Bear as a mascot, and we have Mr. McGriff for the crime dog. But I kept looking for the education mascot, and I couldn't find one. So we created one, education mascot, Buddy Bear. And his trademark is almost ready now. But the thing of it is, we really need to stress education more. If you look at your newspaper, you'll see categories for news, sports, entertainment, and a new one called weird news. But a lot of times you won't find a special category called education. I encourage you to challenge your newspapers to start including that. We need good teachers in this country, and we need to pay them properly for their work. They set the foundation in this nation for all of us. And we taxpayers are having to pay for our, our teachers, whether we have our children in public school or not. So we should stand up and demand excellence. I was talking about how Litter Fun works. Funny little story, there was this mother who bought the video and she um, came back, she said, Mrs. Reynolds, we got it for a four-year-old and our 19-month-old. She said, but I have to tell you this, my, my husband came running to me and he said, honey, you better go check on those children, they have a breathing problem. And she said, a breathing problem? She, he said, yeah, go in the family room, they're breathing really strangely. So she went in there, and she kept hearing all this noise. Ah, ah, ah. And she fell out on the floor laughing. She said, honey, they're not having a breathing problem. They're just practicing their phonics. <laughs> so it was a situation where he was learning his phonics for the first time. <laughs> really wanted to come before you because I see you as God's guerrilla force. You know, you're in the trenches and you know what's really going on firsthand. The statistics that I read aren't statistics to you. They're flesh and blood, souls. You know the needs of the people. We would like to offer an opportunity for you to be able to become part of our army as well, of helping to remedy the reading crisis that we do have in this country. 
And we offer it in a way in which you basically can become distributors and you can generate funds for the ministry that God has given you and blessed you with while helping to raise the literacy level of those within your own community. We hope that you would consider this. Voice of Calvary and Mendenhall Ministries have become some of our ministry distributors and we praise God for them. In fact, Voice of Calvary's 15-month-old Caleb sold three letter fund videos today. <laughs> His mom, Christy, told me about that. And I had the great pleasure of watching him watch the video, and it was amazing to see how already he is trying to phonetically say his letters. A wise man is strong, and a man of knowledge increases power. Let's help some folks be able to read and do that on their own to become powerful. Revelations 1.3 says, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. We at Fun Stuff Productions say, tomorrow's leaders are today's readers. Let's give the children we work with a fantastic bright start in becoming the great Christian leaders of tomorrow. Thank you and may God bless you all.